how much dietary fiber is optimal for health. To address that, let's take a look at a meta-analysis of 14 studies that included more than 1.3 million people. On the x-axis, we've got total fiber intake in grams per day, and on the y-axis, we've got the hazard ratio for all-cause mortality or all-cause mortality risk. And here, in this dose-response meta-analysis, we can see that as fiber increased up to 40 grams per day, that was significantly associated with a 45% reduced risk for all-cause mortality. But is this just healthy user bias? In other words, do people who eat relatively high fiber diets, are they just generally healthier overall, thereby accounting for this effect? So to address that, these studies were adjusted for factors that can impact the association for fiber with all-cause mortality risk, as shown here, which included BMI, smoking, age, alcohol drinking, physical activity, energy or calorie intake, and sex. So we can see that at a minimum, eight of the 14 studies in the meta-analysis included adjustment for sex, and at most, BMI was adjusted in all 14 of the studies. So a lot of the factors that can impact this, these, this association were accounted for in this study. But notably absent are sugar-sweetened beverages, which, as we saw in the last video, are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. So do people who eat high-fiber diets just eat less junk as a potential explanation for this association? And we can see that only one of the 14 studies adjusted for sugar-sweetened beverage intake. Along those lines, none of the 14 studies adjusted their models for ultra-processed food intake, which is also associated with poor health. So hopefully future iterations of studies like this will include, include adjustment for factors like sugar-sweetened beverages and ultra-processed food intake to see if it's a healthy user bias or this is a real effect. All right, so these data don't tell us fiber from what. And this study went into further detail by looking at fiber from legumes, vegetables, fruit, and whole grains. So let's take a look at that data. Starting with the data for legumes, as they have the most hype around them as a quote-unquote pro-longevity food. So let's see what the data has to say. On the x-axis, we've got legume fiber in grams per day, intake in grams per day, once again plotted against the hazard ratio for all-cause mortality or all-cause mortality risk. And here, this is a meta-analysis of four studies that included more than 221,000 people. So as legume fiber intakes increased up to four grams per day, that wasn't significantly associated with all-cause mortality risk, as we can see that their 95% confidence interval, the, that's the data in the dashed black lines, completely overlaps with the red line, which is a hazard ratio of one. So it's not a significant association up to four grams of legume fiber per day. But at five grams of legume fiber per day, we can see that that is a significant association as its two dashed black lines are completely below that hazard ratio of one. So in other words, fiber intake from legumes, five grams per day, is associated with a 12% reduced risk for all-cause mortality. Now, as an example of how we can get five grams of legume fiber into our diets, just using one example, there are many different ways. Chickpeas and their dry weight. 40, 41 grams of chickpeas per day yields 5 grams of fiber at a cost of 155 calories. All right, next up is vegetable fiber, which is what we can see on the x-axis in grams per day, once again plotted against all-cause mortality risk on the y-axis. And this is a meta-analysis of five studies that included more than 674,000 people. So here, there was significantly reduced all-cause mortality risk starting at 7.5 grams of vegetable fiber per day but maximally reduced all-cause mortality risk was at 15 grams of vegetable fiber per day. And that's because, well, we can see that it's 95% confidence interval. Again, the two dashed black lines are completely below that hazard ratio of one, the red line, such that 15 grams of vegetable fiber per day was associated with a 35% reduced all-cause mortality risk. So just as one example for how we can get 15 grams of vegetable fiber per day, just using broccoli as one example, but it could be a mix of many different vegetables. Uh, about a pound of broccoli per day yields 15 grams of fiber at a cost of 158 calories. All right, next up is cereal fiber, which is what we've got on the x-axis, all-cause mortality risk, again, on the y-axis. And this is a meta-analysis of seven studies that included up to 1.1 million people. So here we can see that there was a significantly reduced all-cause mortality risk starting at 3.5 grams of cereal fiber per day. As we can see, that's where its two dashed black lines, the 95% confidence interval, is below the hazard ratio of one. But we can see that a maximally reduced all-cause mortality risk was associated with whole grain 
or serial fiber intakes of seven grams of fiber per day, as shown there. So from this, we can see that seven grams of whole grain fiber per day was associated with a 22% reduced risk for all-cause mortality. What about at higher whole grain fiber intakes? And we can see that up to 10 grams per day, the upper bound for its 95% confidence interval is significantly associated with reduced all-cause mortality risk as it's below that red line, the hazard ratio of one. But note that the risk reduction is similar to seven grams per day. In other words, the association for all-cause mortality risk at seven grams of whole grain fiber per day is similar to, to the 10 gram intake of whole grain fiber per day. All right, so in terms of how we can get whole grain, seven grams, at least seven grams per day of whole grain fiber into our diets, just using again, one example, steel cut oats in dry weight, 70 grams yields seven grams of fiber at a cost of 265 calories. All right, next up is fruit fiber, which is on the x-axis, all-cause mortality, again, uh, or risk on the y-axis. And this is a meta-analysis meta of five studies that included more than 674,000 people. So here we can see that maximally reduced all-cause mortality risk was present at four grams of fruit fiber per day, as shown there. You can see, again, that the dashed black lines are completely below that hazard ratio of one at four grams per day. So that was associated with a 21% reduced all-cause mortality risk. So what about at higher fruit fiber intakes? So at eight grams of fruit fiber per day, we can see that the dash black line, the upper bound for the dash black line, the 95% confidence interval overlaps with the hazard ratio of one, the red line. So that's not a significant association. And we can see that that's true for all fruit fiber intakes above eight grams per day, actually probably about seven grams per day. So just as one example for how we can get at least four grams of fruit fiber per day, 200 grams of strawberries yield four grams of fiber at a cost of seven, seven, 70 calories. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, including discount links for epigenetic and telomere testing, NAD quantification, oral microbiome composition, at-home metabolomics, at-home blood testing with CyFox Health, which includes ApoB, and it's a different panel from the at-home metabolomics kit, green tea, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Dietrime brand that I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.